Hello, and welcome to the Spring 2019 Summit. Uh, we are uh, Team eMoney, and we'll be presenting the application development uh, tracking system. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Martinez, and this is my partner, Jackie Chow. Uh, so the project motivation was uh, pretty simple. Uh, the industry kind of calls for this continuous integration. Uh, what continuous integration is, it's essentially when developers uh, pretty much write code, and they upload all of their code onto one system. Uh, and uh, this pretty much goes through this process of, uh, it goes through a uh, automated build, and then this automated build uh, uh, creates uh, metrics and reports uh, that the developer can look at, and it'll give them information about uh, any of their code. Uh, this is important because it pretty much uh, helps keep the delays in uh, releasing software to the, a minimum and you know, uh, saving time and ultimately money. Uh, so at the beginning of the semester, we were planning on working what we had been working on last semester, which was essentially create, to create an application that was uh, interactive and easier to work with. Uh, and uh, it essentially kept track of everyone's uh, tasks and their uh, different types of work that they were doing and all of the code that they were doing. Uh, but then uh, around mid-February, uh, that changed and that is due to uh, just an internal thing uh, with the company that their release process had changed. So our original application no longer applied. Uh, so w with this change came a new best anticipated outcome. Uh, it was essentially to present information, you know, numbers can be boring and uh, unimpactful. So looking at pictures uh, is a lot easier and what, that's what this Gantt chart does. Uh, the Gantt chart displays time as a picture. And uh, so we had roughly three months to work on it and we are pleased to say that we achieved the best anticipated outcome. Uh, so a big thing with our project was to work in a kind of a software engineering environment and uh, that involved working, in a t with working with test-driven development. Uh, what test-driven development is, is essentially when a, a developer writes code and uh, first they start off by writing a test and this test uh, maps out what their code is supposed to do. Uh, and it's, called, it's known as the red stage because once the developer writes, uh, runs the code, it will give a status of that it failed and that's why it's red. Uh, then the developer writes code to pass the test and th the test, uh, once it passes, it'll give a green status. Uh, after that, they go into improving the code and cleaning it up, uh, refactoring essentially. And then you just go in the cycle until you complete the task assigned. Uh, the advantage of this is that it can catch uh, any changes in your code pretty early on and again, more uh, time saved means more money saved. So our application goes through this workflow of uh, pretty much the user has two uh, options. Uh, one is to fetch data, which prints out a table uh, of our data. And then uh, the other is a Gantt chart option. Uh, when the user clicks on either of these options, uh, the application goes through this process, which is it sends a request to the back end. The back end then requests uh, information from our uh, API development uh, environment, and uh, which is known as Postman. And so once we retrieve that data, which is our primary data, it gives us uh, just general information about the different uh, builds and automated builds. And uh, after that, we use that information to make another request uh, to a different endpoint, and then that endpoint uh, returns the da uh, detailed data. And then in our backend, we end up uh, kind of aggregating it and we send that back to the user, or not to the user, we send that back to the front end and the front end uh, compiles it into a nice and easy to read uh, display. All right, now so I'll be going now over through our key accomplishments while working on this project. To start, I'll be going over the data table. Um, when you look at our web application, we essentially have two tabs, one being called fetch data and another being called Gantt chart. Uh, if you were to click on fetch data, like Jeffrey says, it will send an API call to our server, which will request and retrieve data so that it can be displayed on 
our data table here. In our data table, we display the build number, the build name, the start time, end time, the total duration, and any sub builds along with that build. Um, what you see here will vary depending on the project that the team members are working on. Our next key accomplishment is to display a Gantt chart, which was crucial in the design of our web application. In our Gantt chart, we essentially, it consists of a main build along with any sub builds for that uh, project. We also implemented a couple features to our Gantt chart. Like if you were to hover over QA set here, it will display a text box with the specific details of that build. We also made it so that if you were to click on the build ID numbers, look at the top of each Gantt chart, it will link you back to the original source of where the API got its information from. Now I'll be going over the broader implications of our web application. So when working on a project, it's important to be always aware of the current status of a build, which is why it's a lot easier to look at a visual representation of the time schedule versus looking at, let's say, a uh, text-only display of the time. We also made it so that if, um, when users refer to our Gantt chart, it will highlight the problem builds of the product. That way, uh, developers will be able to come up with swift solutions to fix those problems. Lastly, um, our application will also assist employees to focus developing on the company products since they'll always have a time schedule to refer to visually. And with that said, I'd like to thank everyone that has supported us.